It began when I was walking down the street, in all innocence, when several people called out at once, You dropped your glove! And just like that, I was swept up in one of the unseen subterranean currents of the city, the current of lost and found. It holds you longer than you expect. It holds you and spins you around and around. I looked down behind me, and there was my glove on the sidewalk. I picked up the glove and thanked each of the three people who had intervened on my behalf. An hour or so later, I walked into a Starbucks and saw on the floor a lot of cash. I picked it up. It was a ten and a five. Not a fortune, but not an insubstantial sum either. Is this yours? I asked the man who was standing at the cream and sugar counter, next door the cash lay. He said it wasn't. Another said he thought it belonged to a woman who had just left. Which way did she go, I asked. To the right. Describe her. She was with a kid. Out the door. To the right. I moved quickly and soon I saw a woman with a kid. Just before I caught up with them, they turned into a Barnes and Noble and I followed. Just as I came up behind her, the kid dropped her pink hat. It fell to the floor like a weightless little cloud. This seemed proof enough. Between the two of them, they couldn't hold on to anything. <laughs> Excuse me, I practically shouted. They stopped and turned. I pointed to the girl's hat and then, seized with feelings of chivalry and perhaps excitement at my imminent gesture of altruism, I bent down and picked it up for her. The woman said thank you. She was a bit breathless for some reason. Is this yours, said the woman. Excuse me. Is this yours, I said to the woman. I held out the crumpled bills. She looked confused, glanced down into her purse, then again at the bills. Fifteen dollars, she said. Yes. I think it is, she said. I gave it back. She smiled. The little girl in the pink hat hardly took notice. Perhaps this happened all the time, I thought. People run up to her mother and return things she's dropped. It all would have been a bit of random city choreography were it not for the fact that a couple of days later I came home and realized my wallet was not in my pocket. Deep panic. A lost glove is annoying, but a lost wallet is a statement. You've misplaced your identity, your money, your credit, and various gift certificates accumulated over various holidays and birthdays given to you by your mother. What does it mean to be so careless with love and money? I tore through the apartment and then emptied every pocket in my coat. Two of, the, two of the pockets in my coat had holes. They had long had holes. Therefore, I never put anything in these pockets. But I hastily stepped out of the deli just before coming home. My wallet and loose dollar are still in my hand. Maybe in my moment of haste, I put the wallet in one of the pockets with holes and it had fallen to the street. I pictured it lying on the street. I wanted to rush outside to look for it, but then I thought, no, do not do that. It's crazy to think it's lying in the street. Keep looking in here. But barely a minute went by before I stood before the open refrigerator. There comes a time in all searches for objects lost at home when one capitulates to the irrational urge to check the refrigerator. You realize that rationally there is no way whatever you are looking for is in the refrigerator. But it isn't anywhere else. And what's the harm in looking? No sooner had I seen the fridge light blink on than I slammed it shut and raced outside. What is more irrational, looking for your wallet in the fridge or on a city street? I trotted back to the deli, eyes on the ground. I know there are worse tragedies than losing your wallet, but are there worse feelings than walking down a city block in New York, looking at the ground on the deluded idea that your wallet with 80 bucks and credit cards and license and gift certificates from your mother will simply be lying on the street untouched? In front of the deli, Right in the middle of the street, wet, flattened by many, by many tires, lay my wallet. But it wasn't over. The next day I sat in a restaurant with big picture windows facing Prince Street and watched placidly as a tall, handsome man strode confidently down the street while his wallet popped out like a horse dropping from his back pocket. <laughs> a woman walking in the opposite direction picked it up. I leapt to my feet, not sure which of them to address. I went after the guy. Hey, I called. He didn't hear me. Or he ignored me. He was wearing a big black puffy down jacket. 
I slapped him on the back quite hard. Hey, I said again, and it was all I could do to refrain from adding, idiot. <laughs> he turned to me, wide-eyed, but before he said a word, I said, you dropped your wallet. That lady down the block has it. I went back to my seat in the restaurant and watched as the man hurried after her and tapped her on the shoulder. He explained himself to the woman. She handed him his wallet, smiles all around. My role in this seemed to bring me full circle to the dropped glove. A cycle was complete. For a while after that, I didn't lose anything. Thank you very much. Thank you.